My name is Ziggy Ramor Budamruk Fatnana. I'm an artist, I guess. Uh, more so just a person. Um, I think trying to do what I think is right. Blacks getting away with black murder when they wear and blue. Red and blue, that's flash and blacks run. We don't know if they shoot. We don't know if they shoot. Uh. I was asked initially by Triple J to do like a version. And I got sent a list of songs that had been done for the last 10 years. I noticed that From Little Things, Big Things Grow hadn't been done in like a version. That There's definitely been covers done before, um, but not in that space. Once I realized that, like I, I just kind of felt really drawn to it. You gather around people, I tell you a story, an 80 year long story. Power and pride. I, I kind of had a vague um, piecing together of the story, so I started talking to Kev about it. I knew that there was, there was been this walkout at uh, this place called Wave Hill in Northern Territory, and I knew I knew it was had been an uh, important event, and you know that it, that it had started up a whole lot of things with the land rights movement. It, it sort of land, and uh, of course that was the thing that was instilled into us as kids was the importance of the land to us as people, like, no land, no people. As I was, like, reading the lyrics and kind of seeing what Gurindji, the Gurindji people had done, it made me start to question, like, if positive things can grow out of small decisions. He said, hey, you steal another man country. <laughs> and I said, oh, well, what was before the bestie born and I born? I said, that was a black fella country. Was fat, with money and muscle. I wanted to, I guess, reach out to Paul and Kev because, you know, it is such a special song. Um, and ironically, I got an email from uh, Paul's manager, Bill, asking if I wanted to perform with Paul over New Year's Eve. And I kind of was like, this is wild. Hello, my best My beautiful, amazing engineer, Lewis, worked tirelessly so that it felt like Paul and I were kind of meeting 30 years ago, but also today. End of the first and the second verse is very short four bar phrase, uh, which is the, the one progression uh, on the guitar. So we had to find the exact moment that it started and finished and try turn that into a loop that we could repeat throughout the verse. Then went back to Paul and his team and said, do you like this idea? And asked for the original master tapes that the song was recorded to, uh, which didn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Paul's management sent over yeah. uh, the master file to us, which was then just a file like you'd get on a CD or anything. Um, and we listened to that and spliced it from there. Gather round people and I'll tell you a story 200 years of history that's falsified British invaders that we remember as heroes Are you ready to tell the other side? We side us When I was growing up, knowing that I wanted to be an artist that's kind of where my relationship started with the Opera House Last year, in 2020, I had the, the privilege of, of making a show in collaboration um, with the Sydney Opera House uh, where we presented uh, my debut album, Black Thoughts. And that kind of started a, a really special relationship. I think as I got older and older and like more started to understand my practice, um, it was less just about like playing an iconic stage and more so like what I'd be able to do on it. From little things, big things grow. 
I had just gotten the master back and as I was listening to it um, I just started getting this vision of me standing on top of the opera house in a matter of a couple of months I was in a physical test um, to be cleared if I was going to be able to actually climb. It was almost like a romantic comedy of will they, won't they, will they climb the sails or won't they climb the sails. I don't think I've ever been in my life in an edit suite. We're all battling. <laughs> it's like, wow, what have we just done? It's just so powerful. The song is a timeline where we move through a history and a side of history that hasn't been told here. And as I tell that lyrically and sonically, we're, we're going on a timeline visually. What we found in the editing process is that it's a, it's a true story and we really got on top of the opera house and then we really shot places that have been abandoned by Western society that, and that are being reclaimed by country. So everything was real. Start our story in 1493. With the there was a moment when um, it's the sun coming through this really overgrown uh, building and I remember thinking that's what I was trying to see For a large part of my life, I felt very voiceless and I didn't feel like my story or our stories were important or were going to be heard. So then to be sitting in an editing suite, being taken seriously and not only seriously, but it being given so much care, to me it was almost the funnest and most enjoyable part of the whole process. May 26th in Australia, uh, May 25th in the States was the murder of George Floyd. And I saw Australia uh, being pretty vocal on, on the fact that black lives do matter. And I thought if we wanted to start having conversations uh, and really start to engage about what it means for black lives matter in Australia, we should be hearing from some black lives here. I think what drew me to wanting to be standing on something that is undeniable, you can't ignore it, what drew me to being able to reinterpret such an iconic song is that I'm trying to find a platform and I'm trying to find a space to just not allow apathy, just, just making people have to face it. Tell you a story. 200 years of history that's falsified. British invaders that we remember as heroes.